everybody, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am so excited to have you here with me today. In today's video, as a qualified accountant, I am going to be holding your hand and in 15 minutes we are going to cover the six reports that every small business owner should be running in order to lead their small business to success. In this video, we are going through the business snapshot. We're going through the balance sheet, the profit and loss, the age receivables, the age payables, and the cash flow forecasting function in zero. This is a whistle stop tour. In 15 minutes, we are covering, as a qualified accountant, how I want you to be running your business. This is all content ideas and support that I have built over the last four years, building my accountancy practice, supporting over 800 small businesses. And so in the next 15 minutes, I'm gonna hold your hand, we're gonna go through zero, and I'm gonna teach you how to feel better about your finances. So let's go. So if I am a small business owner and I am logging into zero, there's a couple of things that I need to make sure that I've done before I get stuck into reporting. And so with accounting software, we have connected our bank accounts via bank feeds. And that is any transaction that happens within your business banking will automatically come through into zero software. But the one thing that we need to make sure we've done before we start pulling reports is our bank reconciliation. Or you can run reports without having done your bank reconciliation, but it's really important to note that any reports that you are running in zero will not include any of the transactions that remain unreconciled. So we have to tell zero what those transactions are before we can then report on them. So when you go to your dashboard, any transactions that are sitting here down to reconcile will not be included in any of the reports. So the first thing that we need to do is reconcile any transactions or note that if we haven't, they won't be included in any reporting. It could be that you do bookkeeping one month at a time and that's absolutely fine. Just really important to remember that. And so if I am a business owner and I have curated my Zero dashboard, again, I've got lots of tutorials on this. So if you want to know how to customize and curate your Zero dashboard, you can check out this video on screen now. Once you've done that, you'll have really clear oversight into a lot of what is going on in your business. But how can we use zero reporting to dig deeper to understand exactly what's happening? So I'm now gonna show you one of my all time favorite reports within zero. And that is if we go to the business section, we're gonna click business snapshot. So the business snapshot in zero is really showing you a snapshot of exactly where your business is and it's going to compare it to a certain period that you tell it. So down here, we've got year to date, we can do the last month, but if we just run year to date, it's gonna show us exactly where we're at this year to date and it's gonna compare it to exactly the same period for the year before. So if I just show you what that looks like on a monthly basis, it is gonna refresh and it's gonna show me where I am now and where I was this month last year. But again, if I do year to date, it will show me the date range and then it will compare it to the date range in the last year to date. So this business snapshot is really giving me oversight into multiple reporting factors at the same time. On the left hand side, I've got the profit and loss. So you can immediately see this time last year, we'd made a loss of 5.7 thousand pounds. This year to date, we have made a profit of 7.2 thousand pounds. We can see increases in income over that period and we can see expenses as well. One of the things that I really love about this and the reason I love showing clients this report is because it is a very visual report and this is really where Xero steps away from other accounting software. It's able to report things very visually and that can really help clients who feel a little bit alienated about their numbers. So we've got it shown in a graph here and here, but then it's also giving us some extra data over here. As we know in Zero, anything that goes blue when you hover over, you can actually open in a new tab or you can click into and it will drill down into that number. So as well as these numbers being drillable, as well as being able to see it on a visual basis, it's also giving us extra data with green arrows, red arrows, telling us what's gone up and what's gone down. Obviously income going up is green, expenses going up is red, and it's really showing us even more data here into which cost categories have contributed to that increase the most. So we kick off with profitability, income and expenses, and then we go into efficiency. It's showing business owners, this is exactly what your net profit margin looks like. Looks like. This is how it's changed over the last 30 days. 
And then it's also showing us within our gross profit margin where our profit is sitting in comparison to sales revenue. We then move into operating expenses and this is where Zero is telling us these are your top operating expenses. So these are the largest operating expenses that you've incurred in the last month. We're going to show changes up and down compared to the period before and we're going to show you exactly where they sit in terms of your profit and loss. We've then got some really really great financial position ratios and information so this is showing the business owner in comparison to those assets where are we sitting in between liabilities and equity where is our bank balance sitting how long on average is it taking us within our business to get paid and then also how long is it taking us to pay suppliers we can then also toggle on financial ratios, which is taking us even further and is going to present us with even more data. So again, for lots of small business owners, this section might be overkill. But for me as an accountant, this is my dream. Lots of small business owners actually toggle this off because it, it can be a little bit overwhelming or they might wait until they have a monthly or quarterly meeting with their accountant to really deep dive into this section. But as you can see, and you can probably work out why now, the business snapshot is one of my all-time favourite reports in Zero. It is pulling everything into one place, and you can probably see over here the customizability of this report is amazing as well. So you can literally choose which bank accounts are included in cash balances. We can change the basis of reporting in terms of a cash or accrual, depending on how your business structure works. And again, loads of very easy, quick ticks just in a couple of clicks we can change the reporting period and that feeds through as well. So all time favorite report in Zero is the business snapshot. And again, you can probably tell if you have watched the video that I mentioned earlier on curating your dashboard, there are loads of things that we can be doing in Zero to help us to actually make our business dashboard a little bit similar to the business snapshot by putting all of that data right in front of us as soon as we log into the system. So Business Snapshot is my all-time favourite. Now let's have a look at some of the more traditional reporting methods that business owners will really need to see when they're logging into their accounting software. So I'm going to take you through the balance sheet and the profit and loss. So in my role as an accountant, I work with over 800 business owners and this is always my go-to question, especially with people who have had an accountant before. I'll always ask them, can you tell me the difference between a balance sheet and a profit and loss? So very often clients will say, can you just explain it to me and I'll always push back and say please can you just explain any knowledge that you have on the difference between a balance sheet and a profit and loss but if you'd like to take a deep dive into it I'm going to reference this YouTube video where you can watch me explain the difference between a balance sheet and a profit and loss. So Zero will always default to the period that we're looking at again we can change the default in Zero. so if you just always want to be looking at a monthly basis or a quarterly basis we can change that for you but I'm just going to run you through the profit and loss. Best way to explain where reporting sits within Zero is that the dashboard is your basic dashboard, the business is where you do the day-to-day -day running of your business, that's where we look at snapshots, that's where we raise sales invoices and we process bills to pay. The accounting tab is a zoomed out reporting area of Zero, and so in the accounting tab other than the business snapshot that's where all of our reports sit. We can also toggle on here so if we go to reports we can actually favorite loads of different reports once they are favorited they will appear up here so if you want to be able to access certain reports within one or two clicks we can just come here favorite them and they will always be there for you so the profit and loss in terms of a report does what it says on the tin it is giving us a snapshot overview in terms of the income the cost of sales the gross profit margin the overheads and then the operating profit but this would definitely be in my top list of reports to access in zero if you are a small business owner next up we're going to do exactly the same and we're going to go to the balance sheet i would definitely recommend favoriting these reports so you can access all of them within a couple of ticks again really important to have a confident understanding of your balance sheet to understand the carried forward position again your profit and loss is what happens in one financial year and your balance she is that are the balances of the assets and liabilities that get carried forward from one year to the next. I would always try and explain the balance sheet to business owners in if you take your business and turn it upside down and shake it it's what will come out. They're physical objects that will remain from one financial year to the other and then a couple of intangibles like your bank balance. So having a really confident understanding and a sense check of your balance sheet is fantastic. Again if you feel a little bit alienated by very heavy number reporting it could be that you might like to include some balance sheet ratios into your business snapshot and stick to the business snapshot 
when you are reporting. So we've done a snapshot, we've done balance sheet, we've done profit and loss. There's two more reports that I would really love every small business owner to be pulling and reporting every single month. And those are age payables and age receivables. I'll go to age receivables first because this is the one that most people like to look at first. This is who owes you money. This is fantastic for a couple of different reasons. It's a really good sense check if you're seeing disparities between the amount of work that you've done in that month and your bank balance. The difference between the amount of work that you've done in your bank balance is going to be your age receivables. So that, that's showing you who owes us money on invoices that were raised in this month. But really it's the one month, two month, three month and older section that we're gonna pay close attention to because this is where we should be doing credit control. I have a fantastic on-demand resource, which I'll put a purchase link in the description to this video, which is how to get paid faster as a small business owner. And it actually teaches you how to use Zero to do credit control and build a credit control process to make sure you are paid as fast as possible. So it's the one month, two month, three month. These are the sections of this report that we're gonna be paying close attention to. We're gonna be taking deep dives into these invoices and with a couple of clicks in Zero, we can chase those customers for payment, literally just by sending them remittances and statements to get paid. Next up is exactly the same, but it's the opposite. So age payables is who we need to pay. That's really important if we've got tight cash flow. We need to be looking at our current cash position, who owes us money, who we owe money to, and in which order we need to do those things. So this is the age payables. We've got some expense claims. We've got some payables. Again, it's the one month, two month, three month, and older sections that we need to be running here. We need to be going through and checking them for accuracy, checking any to any statements that we've got within the business and then making sure that we have communicated to our suppliers and added them to a payment run. The final report that I want to show you today because we've gone through a business snapshot, a profit and loss, a balance sheet, age payables and age receivables is the short term cash flow forecasting function in zero. So really important thing to note on this section is that cash flow very often is the cited factor when businesses either win or lose. Lots of small businesses that fail cite cash flow as the reason, but it's really important to note with zero cash flow forecasting that firstly, this is a limited function. So this isn't really complex three-tiered cash flow forecasting. This is zero, taking your current bank balance, adding your age receivables, deducting your age payables, adding in any recurring transactions. It, it isn't psychic, it doesn't know about your future plans. And so it's really important to bear that in mind when you are using zero cash flow forecasting. And again, if you need enhanced cash flow forecasting within your business, I would recommend reaching out to your accountant or booking in a call with us to chat about that using the link in the description to this video. So this is showing us invoices owed, invoices owed to you, bill to pay, and your projected end balance. So those were the six reports that I want you to get stuck into every single month as a small business owner. As always, the very best way to support me as a creator is to give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so that you get notified every time I release a juicy video like this one. As always, let me know in the comments section what video or zero tutorial you would like to see next because that's exactly how I choose which videos to create. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today and I hope to see you again very soon.